Ibn al salas Introduction to the Science of Hadith Arabic, MQDMT Abn al Slafi Lumaldith Translit. Mukadima ibn al Salafi al Hadith is a 13th century book written by Abd al Rahman ibn Uthman al Sharazuri, better known as Ibn al Salah, which describes the Islamic discipline of the science of Hadith, its terminology, and the principles of biographical evaluation. A hadith is a recorded statement, action or approval of the Islamic prophet Muhammad which serves as the second source of legislature in Islamic law. The science of hadith that this work describes contains the principles with which a hadith specialist evaluates the authenticity of individual narrations. The introduction comprises 65 chapters, each covering a hadith-related issue. The first 33 chapters describe the various technical terms of hadith terminology which describe the conditions of a hadith's authenticity, or acceptability as a basis for Islamic jurisprudence. The following chapters relate to the isnad, or chain of narration. Next are a series of chapters pertaining to the etiquette to be observed by hadith scholars and manners of transcription. The last chapters describe various issues relating to the narrators of hadith including naming conventions. Ibn al-Salah began the introduction as a series of lectures he dictated to his students in Damascus ending in 1233. It has received considerable attention from subsequent authors who explained, abridged and set it to poetry and it became an example for latter books of its genre. The introduction has been published a number of times in its original Arabic and has also been translated into English. Topic: Title. As the introduction was not officially named by the author, there exists some speculation as to its actual title with different possibilities suggested. Al Dahabi referred to it as Ulam al Hadith, the sciences of Hadith, as did Ibn Hay and Muhammad ibn Ya Fa al Qatani. Ashar bint Abd al Rahman said in the foreword of her edition of the introduction His book about the sciences of Hadith is the best known of his works without comparison, to the extent that it is sufficient to say, the book of Ibn al-Salah, the intent being understood due to its popularity and stature. With the previous scholars, its subject matter overcame it, thus being referred to as, the book of Ibn al-Salah about ulam al-Hadith or as he referred to it in its opening pages, the book of familiarity with the types of ulam al-Hadith. It has become well known as of late as Muqaddimah ibn al Salah fi ulam al Hadith, ibn al Salah's introduction to the sciences of Hadith. Nur al Din itr, in the introduction to his edition of the introduction, concluded that its actual name is either Ulam al Hadith, the sciences of Hadith, or Ma Rifa anw i ilm al Hadith, familiarity with the types of the science of Hadith. This is based upon the author's own usage in his own introduction in addition to the usage of other scholars in the centuries after the authoring of the book. Similar to bint abd al-Rahman, he acknowledged that the book is most commonly referred to as Muqaddimah ibn al-Salah the introduction of ibn al-Salah. Overview. Topic Origin Books of Hadith terminology passed through two developmental phases. The first was the compilation of the statements of earlier scholars, quoting the expressions they had used without evaluating those terms or suggesting terms applicable to those expressions. 
This was the methodology adopted by earlier scholars such as Yahya ibn Ma'in Ali ibn al-Madini, Muslim ibn al-Hajjaj, al-Tirmidhi in their works. The second phase consisted of books based upon and evaluating those of the first phase. Their authors cited the quoted statements of the earlier works and began the arrangement and codification of relevant terms. Principles were established and, for the most part, accepted, with individualized terms exclusive to particular scholars explained in context. Examples of books authored in this manner are, Ma' Refer Ulam al Hadith by al Hakim, al Kafaya by al Khatib al Baghdadi, and the introduction of Ibn al Salah. The introduction finds its origins in the books of al Khatib al Baghdadi, who authored numerous books on the various disciplines of the science of Hadith, upon which all latter scholars in the discipline were indebted. In particular, he focused on Al-Khatib's Al-Kafaya as he viewed it as comprehensive of the various disciplines of the science of hadith. The book began as a series of lectures Ibn al-Salah delivered at the Ashrafiya school in Damascus. In these lectures, he dictated its contents piecemeal to his students. He began delivering the lectures on Friday, June 17, 1233 CE, 630R, his first lecture delivered in that school, and completed them at the end of September or the beginning of October of the year 1236-634. The introduction was either transcribed or memorized by those students in attendance, it was in a similar manner that the introduction was disseminated. Al-Dahabi named a number of scholars who conveyed it directly from Ibn al-Salah, the majority of whom then authorized Al-Dahabi to do so as well. Similarly, al Iraqi mentioned two scholars who conveyed it to him from Muhammad ibn Yusuf al Muttar, a student of Ibn al Salah, as did Ibn Hai, who mentioned his Isnad chain of narration to it, also having conveyed it from two of his own teachers. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Arrangement. While Ibn al-Salah arranged his work to a greater extent than previous authors on the subject, it had its limitations in organization because it began as a series of lectures. He did not arrange his book in a particular manner, in some cases mentioning a term related to the MATN text, before moving on to one related to the Isnad chain of narration, or perhaps mentioning types related to both. As a large number of students were present at his lectures, memorizing or transcribing them, he was subsequently unable to revise this order. Were he to have done so, the students' original transcriptions might then differ with his revisions as some may have attended the original lectures and others the revised. The introduction of the book required an index to guide readers, which illustrates the somewhat disorganized nature of his work. Ibn al Salah, in his introduction, codified the terminology established by those scholars before him based upon his reading of their works. He did so by citing some of those scholarly statements in the earlier works and deducing from them common terms and definitions in the manner of a scholar authoring a book of fiqh jurisprudence. In this manner, his book was based upon those principles established by the earlier hadith specialists combined with some elements of fiqh. An example of this would be the inclusion of the division of hadith into mutawatir and ahad. He therefore only mentioned the statements of the earlier scholars as appropriate and mostly sufficed with conclusions drawn from them and then specifying or clarifying a definition. The definitions Ibn al Salah used to describe the individual terms of hadith terminology were largely in accordance with the views of the majority of hadith specialists. In some instances, he would mention an undisputed opinion, before mentioning one that was widely accepted and then describing the difference. He would generally precede his critique of differing opinions by saying, I say. 
For the primary terms described, he mentioned an example to illustrate that definition. His goal in doing so was to clarify that term and not necessarily establish it. He also distinguished his book by responding to the positions of other scholars in a detailed manner. Topic. Content Ibn al-Salah mentioned in his introduction to the introduction 65 chapters, each specific to a particular type or term of hadith terminology before saying that an even larger number was conceivable. He began by discussing sahih authentic as the first category, and then hasan good as the second, da'if weak the third, musnad supported the fourth and so on. Ibn Jam'ar, in his abridgment, divided these terms into four different categories according to subject and adding six terms in the process. The first pertains to the MATN text of the Hadith and its three divisions and thirty types. The three divisions are Sahih, Hasan, and Da'if. The thirty types include those mentioned in Hadith terminology and others. The second deals with the Isnad chain of narration and comprises eleven types. These types generally fall within the discipline of biographical evaluation. The third category includes six types, the qualifications necessary for conveying hadith, the manners in which they are transmitted, the transcription of hadith, and the etiquette of the narrator and of the student. The fourth category, which comprises 21 types, relates to the names of the narrators. This includes the definition of a Sahabi companion, a tabi follower, the time periods of narrators, names and paedonymics among others. Later scholars included additional types of hadith in their own works, with some almost reaching 100. <laughs> Impact The introduction became the basis for subsequent books in Hadith terminology. A number of subsequent scholars followed Ibn al-Salah in the ordering of his book, including al-Nawawi, Ibn Kathir, al-Iraqi, al-Balkini, Ibn al-Jam'r, al-Tabrizi, al-Tibi and al-Zurkashi. In many instances this influence was direct, with numerous scholars authoring books indicating its finer points, explaining and abridging it and converting its meanings to poetry which then, in turn, was explained as will be discussed below. Some of the scholars who spoke highly of the introduction are Ibn Jam'r said the Imam, the Hafiz, Taqi al-Din Abu Amra ibn al-Salah has followed the example of previous scholars in his book in which he has comprehensively included various points of benefit and compiled has done so with precision in his fine work. Burhan al-Din al-Abnashi said, the best work in its field, the most innovative, constructive and beneficial is Ulam al-Hadith. Al-Iraqi described it as, the best book authored by a Hadith specialist in defining its terminology. Muhammad ibn Ahmad al-Fasi described it as beneficial. Ibn Hai said that because Ibn al-Salah gathered in it what had been previously dispersed throughout other books, people focused upon it, following his methodology. The works are innumerable in which the introduction has been set to verse, abridged, added to and subtracted from, disagreed with and supported." Muhammad ibn Ya'far al-Qatani quoted the above from Ibn Hai. Topic. Books based upon the introduction As alluded to previously, a number of works have been authored, based upon or otherwise derived from introduction. 
both the number of these derivative works and the stature of their authors are indicative of the prominence and significance of this work. Nucat Each of the following have authored a book of Nucat, in KT literally, points of interest or benefit, of the introduction al Iraqi in al Takayad wa al Ida Altkwawidi Walayda al Bada al Zerkashi Ibn Hai in al Ifsar Topic: Abridgments. Each of the following have authored an abridgment: Ibn Jam R in Al Minhal Al Rawi, Al Minhal Al Roy Al Nawawi in Al Irshid Al Ashad, which he then abridged in Takrib Al Irshid Tikrib Al Ashad, which was explained a number of times by Al Iraqi. Al Sakkawi, Al Suyuti, Ibn Kathir in Al B. Ith Al Hathith, Al Bathalith. Topic: Poetry. The following have set introduction to verse, adding some content in the process. Al Iraqi in his thousand verse poem, Nazam al Durafi, Ilm al Athar, Nzm al Durafi Lem al which, in turn, was explained by a number of scholars, including Al Iraqi himself in two explanations, one long and the other brief, Al Sakkawi in Fath al Mughath, Eth al Mahith al Suyuti in Qatta al Dura. Qenta Aldra Qutub al Din al Kidari in Suad al Maraki, Swd al Maraki Zakria al Ansari in Fath al Baki, F al Baki al Suyuti in his thousand verse poem, which was comparable to al Iraqis with some additions. Editions <laughs> <laughs> The numerous editions of the introduction in its original Arabic include two of the more reliable Muqaddimah ibn al Salah wa Mahassan al Istila, edited Ashar bint Abd al Rahman, Cairo, Dar al Marif, 1990, 952 pgs. It is published along with Mahassan al Istila by al Bulkini. Ulam al Hadith li ibn al Salah, edited Nur al Din itr. Damascus, Dar al Fikr al Mu Asir, 1998, 471 pgs. Translation The introduction has been translated into English and published as an introduction to the science of Hadith, by Eric Dickinson, as part of the Great Books of Islamic Civilization series. The translator has provided a biography of Ibn al-Salah derived from numerous sources, in addition to copious footnotes throughout. It is published by Garnet Publishing Limited, Reading, 2006, 356 pgs. Topic. See also. English translation to introduction to the science of hadith.